I'm Ali Langdon. Welcome to a special edition of A Current Affair. We're coming to you from Lismore, a year to the day since the heavens opened. And tonight, the skies, they're a little clearer, a far cry from the devastation that hit this proud community. As raging floodwaters broke all records, the Tinny Army came to the rescue. It's the Aussie way. Get in and help. Get it done. They were in the ceiling, then they were cutting themselves out of the ceiling. It wasn't a disaster. It was a quantum level above that. It was a catastrophe. We're ready for disaster. Mm -hmm. But we're not ready for catastrophe. You didn't know what you were going to get into. Like, you didn't know, you know, from one rescue to the next, what, what was going to happen. The 28th of February, 2022. Lismore, in the heart of Australia's northern rivers, is under siege. The river peaking at a record 14.4 metres. The wall of water swallowing the city. Five dead, thousands homeless, livestock and wildlife gone. It was water torture, and as the pleas for help poured in, emergency services were quickly overwhelmed. It was a remarkable group of volunteers, now known as the Tinny Army, who answered the call. Local dad, Clark Howard, still carries the emotional scars 12 months on. I remember this bridge. I remember watching this and, I mean, at one stage that was pretty much underwater. Yeah, we started bringing all the people, just not only myself, but all the other boats as well, bringing people back to the bridge because it was safe and dry. And then uh, later on in the day, I think midday or a bit after midday, the water started flowing over the top of that bridge. You still see it? You still reading yeah. a bit? Yeah, yeah, all the time. It took, there was months of replaying it over in, in your mind and some of the rescues we did were not pleasurable at all, hearing the screams of, of everyone. And uh, after, after it all settled down, I had a guy say to me that the screams are a good thing, it's when they stop is, is when it's trouble. If it wasn't for the Tinny Army, a lot more people would have lost their lives. It was incredible to see the community and how many people and, and how many boats just turned up. Are you proud of yourself? Oh, look, I, it doesn't... I, I don't take any credit for it. It's just anyone in, you know, I get, I get in their that. right I totally get not taking credit. would, would yeah. do what we did. Across town, Aidan Ricketts was in a battle of his own. You're all used to the rain now anyway, aren't you? I think this <laughs> festival of floods got, you know, mm. got the rain happening. Mm. I'm looking at your house. I mean, they have some serious stilts your house mm. is on. Mm. And you went under. Yeah. And while your house is going under, you're out saving others. The water was actually over the top of that railing, mm. such that things could actually float out, out over the railing. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm. I mean, it, once I was in the boat, I was in emergency mode. I didn't think about property. The house two doors down from you, that got yeah. washed away, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, those people had it very rough. First they were in the ceiling, then they were cutting themselves out of the ceiling. But mm. later in the day, their whole house just washed into our backyard mm. here. That was probably the most traumatic thing for me when I thought how many people are trapped in roofs with rising water. Mm. Um, you know, and it, it sort of affected me and I looked out across the town and then, oh well, on with it and, mm. and got on with it. How were those people and, um, you know, the, the elderly neighbour when, when you pulled her out of the roof, how was she? Look, everybody's calm, really. Everybody's calm and everybody's humble. I mean, this is, you know, the beauty of disaster is kind of what it brings out in the human spirit. Mm. and and. You know, that's one of the big take-homes for myself and many people who went through it. There, there's all of the bad things mm. here, and then there's all of these amazing inspirational experiences that you have along the way, and they, they don't cancel each other out, they just sort of sit in contrast to each other. Before this day, there was no such thing as the Tinny Army, was there? How do you think 12 months on people are going? I mean, the other thing I really noticed is this thing, this thing about acceptance. When, you know, on the day of the disaster, you, you go right down to the bottom, and if you can accept that baseline, Suddenly everything's like these little gifts. It's, oh, look what we saved and look who's helped us and look what we've still got. And so all this, suddenly from acceptance, it turns into gratitude. So you put the tinny under the house 
when there was plenty of rain. Yeah, I've put a bilge pump in it now, so... Well, it looks kind of steady-ish. It's hard to believe the water got inside Aidan's house. You really don't want to look down to me. Yeah. How high did the water come up here? To about, about here. Up there? Yeah. And it's never gone over this balcony No, it's before. never been through the floor. Paul and Kane are mates. That Monday, they made around 20 rescues. So a year ago, you two were in the boat together. What did you see? Devastation. Your own fear? For a while, yeah. At times, definitely. You, just, you didn't know what you were going to get into. Like, you didn't know, you know, from one rescue to the next, what, what was going to happen. So even in just this street alone, you rescued a couple from this house just here? Yeah, this is our first rescue of the day. We got called over by a guy in a kayak and just said, there's a couple in the roof, and we just came, traversed our way in and helped get them out. Pretty stressful. Just felt sorry for them coming out of the roof cavity with mm. their entire life in a backpack. So they got in the boat, you dropped them off to safety and... Back out from the point. So there was no, no thought about it, just get down here and do what no. you can? Yeah. Just straight in, yeah. They didn't do anything twice. You didn't need to help out. And... and you haven't seen them? No. Until today? And the guy in the kayak, Scott. <laughs> oh, Paul. Yeah, Scott. Scott. Nice to meet you. Scott Kane. Okay, how are you? And you remember this guy in the oh, roof cavity? Mark, how are you? Great. Great. I've been wanting to find you guys. First time I've seen you since that <laughs> afternoon, that morning, right? I didn't know who they were, just complete strangers. How relieved were you for, oh. to get yourself and your wife into that boat? Very relieved. And yeah. it's all because of the tinny army. The tinny navy. <laughs> which includes canoes, kayaks and tinnies. It's the Tinny Navy. And, yeah, I'm just blown away. The community responded and that's why it's so good to live in this community. And to see them today? Yeah, I'll shake your hands six times and I'll buy you a carton of beer each. You know, it was the day that this community saved itself and no one is prouder than the Mayor, Steve Craig, who joins me now. Steve, I know that you surprised the Tinny Army with medals today and I'm thinking that maybe you got a bit emotional. Uh, I'm not afraid to say I, I shed a tear, Ali. You know, it, today really is an emotional day. It's been a roller coaster, to be honest with you. Um, like 12 months ago, my phone started ringing at 4.30 in the morning and, uh, yeah, it, it's certainly been a day of reflection, that's for sure. I know one of those phone calls was probably from us at those days in the Today Show, but I remember talking to you as those floodwaters were rising and you were new to the job, you'd been in it for two months and all of a sudden you had this huge responsibility. Yeah, and, you know, you can only do what you can do and... Uh, being part of the community. You just want to fight for your town and fight for the residents and that's all I've done for 12 months now is just try and keep our community going and throw my arms around as many people as I can and, and I won't stop fighting for the town, mayor or not. And while you're fighting for the town, what I'm not sure everybody knows is that day you lost your home and you lost your businesses. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, I've said it many times. My wife is an absolute legend. She, we had three kids at home as well, and uh, she's been the true rock of, of our family. And she was in there cleaning up and helping the community as well, and helping wherever she could and keep their family together while I was out trying to uh, drum up some support. So it really is a community effort, it's a family effort. Everyone chips in and does what they can. How are you feeling about today? I mean, look behind you here, this is your community. You, you love this town, you fought for them all year. There must be a lot of emotions tied up with it being one year on. Oh, 100%, you know, and every person here has a story and that's probably the, the tragedy of it. Everyone's been affected in such a different way. Some people are paying mortgages on home that are unlivable and other people are living in a pod village next to strangers that they're used to living with neighbours for 20 or 30 years, you know. Every single person's got a story and I've said for a long time this is a humanitarian story as much as it's a natural disaster and I'll keep fighting for my town and for my people for as long as they'll let me. 
I've noticed being here last week and then today talking to locals, there's really mixed feelings. You've got those who want today to be an acknowledgement of the of the strength and resilience that this town showed. And for others, it's, it is too raw because they're not back in their homes. They're living in caravans. What does the community need right now? Oh, for front and centre is the fact that this is a housing critical crisis. Uh, as you say, people are camped in their own houses. There's beautiful homes with no internal walls and, you know, as I said, we've got pod villages set up as temporary homes which people could be living with in for up to five years. We've got to get the housing sorted and, you know, every level of government have been very supportive. We just need to see that action rolled out very soon. Will this more be OK? I certainly hope so. I've banked my business on it and my family on it, so I'm not going anywhere. I love the place and uh, I've got big plans and our council's got big plans to rebuild bigger and better than ever and love for you to come back in 12 months and see the progress and see how we're going. Oh, good. Well, you know what? I know the Lions Club's over there. They're cooking a great sausage, so get over and enjoy one. You've got loads of events coming up over the next coming weeks. I think it's going to be a pretty festive atmosphere, so have the best time and know that we're all thinking of you. Thanks, Ali. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Good stuff.